Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the characters that come in these two unmatched sets for Marvel. We've got over here Redemption Row with three characters, and Hell's Kitchen with three characters. So I'll be taking a look at those. This is not a, a full proper review, we'll be doing one of those next week from when I'm recording this. During the Spring Spectacular, you're going to get to see a Foursquare review, in which I will show you how to play the game and hear everybody's opinion. This video is just a little precursor to that, if you already know Unmatch especially, and you want to know what these characters do, kind of their special abilities and how they behave in the game, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and cut to the table. I'm gonna show you the breakdown of these six different folks and uh, just uh, give you a little idea of what you might be getting into when you jump into some Marvel Unmatched. So let's take a look at the Redemption Row set here, starting with Luke Cage and his sidekick, Misty Knight. He's the only one who has a sidekick in this set and there's Luke Cage there. There dials Misty Knight. So Luke Cage's ability, the main thing, is very straightforward. He takes two less combat damage from attacks. So every time he is attacked, you can shrug off two of that because of that titanium skin. And then he's got a few very interesting abilities. He hits pretty hard, as you can see from this card and this card here. Uh, they are going to be uh, very strong. Sweet Christmas! And he's going to be drawing uh, cards throughout the deck, but the other main thing is this secondary ability when defending, if he takes no damage, he is considered to have won that combat. And there's a few cards that are going to tie to that, such as this one here. After combat, draw a card. If you won combat, draw two, whether he actually won or just didn't take any damage. He's got uh, something like this one here. Uh, this is a Misty Knight's card, which is very interesting when attacked. She'll switch places with Luke Cage, and Luke Cage is now in that fight. And a few other ones where, again, if you win combat, you get to do some ability. He's also got this very interesting card here, where he just shows up from anywhere and demands his money, getting an extra action and pummeling somebody. So he's a hard-hitting, no-nonsense kind of deck, and there's going to be a few cards that are very much about that sort of action. He also has a few cards that he can boost as well in the deck, but he's just basically very tough, shrugging off a lot of attacks and hitting back for a lot of damage. So that's Luke Cage. Next up, we've got Ghost Rider, who has one of the absolute coolest miniatures in Unmatched. You can see him there mounted on his bike with that fire chain behind him and the whole thing covered in flames. Very, very cool mini. And then you'll see he's got 17 health and these five Hellfire tokens. So he begins with all five. He can, when he maneuvers, he can spend one to move four instead of two, be able to move through the enemies, and deal one damage to every enemy he moves through. So very powerful. He can basically uh, one-shot, do, do a little you know damage to them just by running through them. Very nice control mechanism there. And then a lot of his abilities are going to have to do with spending that Hellfire and gaining it back. So this card here, five attack, you may spend one to draw two cards. Here you can spend two Hellfire to gain an action. Here we've got during combat, spend any amount to increase the defense of this card by the amount spent. This one, which is a scheme, lets you move them up to one uh, and up to one adjacent uh, fighter, four spaces each, gain two Hellfire, gain one action. And all sorts of things like that, okay? Uh, here, if you lost the combat, you gain Hellfire equal to the damage you took. So a lot of the cards are going to be modifiable by using this Hellfire you've got. And uh, there's even cards in there that will just let you replenish it all up again. But you do have to manage, you know, when you have it, don't have it. Some cards will even check for how much you have without having you spend it. And then modify the card with that. So very interesting usage of a secondary resource. Last up in Redemption Row here, we've got Moon Knight, who also has a very cool miniature there with his cape flowing behind him. 16 health, and then one very interesting and quirky trick. Moon Knight will have three of these identifying cards, all right? So we start here with Moon Knight. When you begin the game, you begin as this character. 
and it says at the start of your turn you can move two spaces, and at the end of your turn you change identities to the next one. So you go to this one, and then this character is going to add plus two to the value of their attack cards. At the end of that turn, you will change to Mr. Knight. And Mr. Knight adds plus one to all their defense values, and then you switch back to Moon Knight, Khonshu, Mr. Knight, and you cycle every time. There are a few ways that you can change that up. For example, this card here lets you, after combat, you may change to your next identity, so you can skip one, basically, because at the end of the round you'll switch to the next one, right? And then you've got, you know, a few other things. This One of the main things this deck does is it has a lot of cards which are versatile. They have, they can be both an attack or a defense, these purple cards. There are a lot of those in this deck, as you see there, okay? So lots and lots of those, very few that are just defense or just attack. So this one here lets you discard the top card of your deck, then you draw a number equal to that, the boost value of that. Some of them will allow you to um, hurt both you and your opponents as well. There's a lot of deck manipulation messing with your opponent that way. Uh, you can move your opponent around. Uh, cancel, it's a feint, right? This one lets you, uh, you know, move your fighter up to four spaces, and you can move through people, then gain an action, so it lets you escape a tight spot. But the main twist here being those three identities. The fact that you can run up on your opponent with the very first one, you can attack them for plus two, and the one after that is a bigger defense. So the order of these is also very important because you'll you're likely to uh, be able to hit them and then on your next turn beef up your defenses. Now if you're caught at a bad time with one of them then yes you won't be getting a bonus that you wish you were getting but the sequence makes sense where you cycle through them and continue doing that and of course you can change that up with that one card I showed you. So that's the main twist there for Moon Knight, that ability to be what they need to be at any given moment. Alright, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the Hell's Kitchen set, which again comes with three characters, and we've got Daredevil here up first. Daredevil is an interesting character. It has a smaller deck of cards than other characters in the set, and in pretty much every set. But there's a reason for that, and that is because you, you have some cards that want you to run out of cards. He wants to be on the edge, right? So during combat, if you have two or fewer cards in your hand, you may blind boost your attack by flipping over a card and boosting it for that. And then he's got this card here, which is a very interesting card, in which during combat, if you have no cards in your deck, then the value of this card is eight instead of four. A huge hit. Though afterwards, you will then shuffle some cards onto your deck, creating a deck again, basically. You've also got something like this, that after combat you get to deal two damage to uh, a fighter adjacent. This is a defense card, so you hit him back while you're defending. We've got this here, where you can blind boost this attack, and as it says, this is in addition to any blind boost from Daredevil's special ability. So you can blind boost this twice if you're in the right situation. And we've got this one here, take a knee, discard the top card of your deck, recover health equal to its boost value. So again, many of the cards, and because you are blind boosting, are burning through your deck, meaning you are more likely to run out of cards, meaning your opponent has to watch out for this one right here, of which you have two. But as you use them, they'll get shuffled back into your deck, right? Put back in there. And then you've got a few schemes like this. You know, choose an attack, defense, or versatile card, and return that to your hand. So you're going to be taking things back, burning through your smaller deck here, uh, blind boosting things, trying to, again, be on the edge. Be on the edge of running your deck out, which is normally bad. Be on the edge of having just too few cards, which, again, is normally bad. But getting boosts from that, from being the underdog and uh, hitting your opponent for all you've got. So that is Daredevil. Next up, we've got Bullseye, who is a ranged character with a very interesting ranged ability, by the way. And there he is, Bullseye. Not a very flashy mini, but a cool one nonetheless. And Bullseye has a very simple ability, which is he can attack from up to five spaces away, ignoring zones. 
the usual rules for a ranged attack. He simply bypasses and completely ignores those. If you can get there in five, you can attack. And then he's got a few things that are going to be all about if you've already done something this round, then this card is better. If you've already won a combat this round, if you moved this round, that sort of thing. So this one, after Bullseye, you get to place him in a space that shares no zones with his current space. So he just will whoop, leap somewhere. Here we've got draw two cards as a scheme. Draw two cards. If you won combat already this turn, draw an additional card and gain an action. Very powerful. This one, if you already won, then ignore the value of your opponent's card. If you, uh, let's see, this one here is after combat, move him up to one space, draw a card, gain an action. So it's a small attack, but you get to keep attacking after that if you want to or get away. Here we go. If you started your turn in, a, in your current space, the value of this is five instead. This one, if you already won combat, your opponent discards one card. Uh, if you already won combat, the value of this is six. If your opposing uh, fighter was already was not defeated, then deal one damage to the fighter in the opposing fighter's zone. So that doesn't necessarily have to target that person, right? Um, yeah, it's basically all about tempo, right? If you've already done a thing, then do an extra thing. That's what um, Bullseye is all about. But of course, the main takeaway here is really that special ability. You do not need to worry about the zones and the colors for those zones. You can just count spaces and go after your opponent. And then the last character in Hell's Kitchen is Electra, who is also a very interesting, uh, quirky character. Electra there in a very cool pose, as you can see. Nice mini. And it only has seven health, as you can tell over here from the dial. But Electra is going to be resurrected. So as it tells you here, They've got the first time that they would be defeated. Instead, you remove from the board a figure, and you're going to flip this over, and she's going to be resurrected. So as we go down in health from seven, which is not a whole lot, and she is defeated, then we are going to flip this over, and now it is Electra Resurrected, who comes in with nine health. And we are going to switch this card, which lets you know specifically to ignore that hand symbol, we're going to switch that with, where's the other one, the Resurrected, with this one here. Who now, it says, make sure you include the symbols for that. And she comes in with nine, alright? She's also going to have some sidekicks, by the way. Four of these ninjas, the hand. She's going to have four of those, which is quite a few. And then a few cards that, again, just like this one here, doesn't do a lot. This one on its own. Oh, nothing on its own except the uh, it's versatile. But then cards like this, where the first time through her life, you just do the top. So after combat, she takes three damage. Not great. And then second time through, resurrected, no damage. That's because this card is incredibly powerful. And then things like this, choose an opponent and look at their hand, gain one action. Choose one card for them to discard if this is already the second time through her life there. Uh, there's a few cards that are going to mess with the uh, the hand. Things like allowing you to put a hand in place of her and become the defender. This one here, during combat, you may reveal a card uh, named Psy, which I already showed you. Like this one here, from your hand. And then this is five instead. This one here, return a defeated hand to a space in her zone. That sort of thing. This one here, after combat, deal one damage to each adjacent opposing fighter, which does not work if she hasn't been resurrected. So that's the main twist here. The fact that her cards are not as good the first time through her cycle, her life, and much, much better the second time. In fact, sometimes she even hurts herself to try to get to that point. And then comes back and has new abilities and new defenses, right? So that's the main uh, gimmick there, as you can see, on her opening card. And four sidekicks is quite a few, especially when she can bring them back and switch them in for her own fight so that she's not vulnerable. So there you go. Hopefully that is enough of a uh, sampling that it lets you know if these are uh, something you are interested in or if you're only considering picking one up. 
which one you might be more excited by. I like both. I, I, I think they uh, go together well. You could, of course, mix and match everything in these and everything else in Unmatch, for that matter. But, um, yeah, I think this is a f very fun set of characters with very neat abilities. So, there you go. Again, make sure you check out the full review during the Spring Spectacular. But uh, that's going to do it for right now. Thanks for watching. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.